Number 10. Pol Pot When Pol Pot became the new communist leader of Cambodia, he had plans and dreams to make the people of his nation equal by any means necessary. It didn't make sense to have some people living great lives in the cities while everyone else toiled away in the farms, so he decided that the majority of all urban dwellers should be forcibly relocated to collective farms and labor camps. This wasn't the greatest plan for stability and growth and, in fact, had the opposite effect, causing nearly 20% of the entire nation's population to die from various means such as malnutrition, deadly working conditions, disease, and even execution. Most of the people evacuated from urban centers were given limited rations and care as they were marked for destruction. They were even taken out into the fields to dig their own mass graves and buried alive. The government under Pol Pot claimed that they would only need one or two million people to create their planned socialist utopia. The list of this totalitarian regime's atrocities goes on, but the total number suspected to have been killed by their actions is only in the hundreds of thousands. Thankfully, the regime collapsed in 1979 when Cambodia's relations with Vietnam went sour and they went to war. Cambodia lost the war. Pol Pot would be exiled and later captured, where he would soon die from heart failure. Number 9. Emperor Xerxes of Persia Despite being known as one of the more power-hungry and oppressive empires of the ancient world, the Persian Empire wasn't half bad while under the rule of its first leader, Cyrus the Great, and his son, Sambesis II. They allowed most monarchs to maintain control of their lands and people, and most of the empire was relatively peaceful. King Numero III, Darius I, was likewise pretty fair and all around considered one of the greatest kings of his time. But everything changed with the fourth leader of Persia, Xerxes, who opted to take the title the King of Kings and had his mind set on far greater tasks than peace and sitting on a throne all day. He wanted the world. Xerxes was one of the first rulers to instigate the divine right of kings over his people, allowing him to do whatever he wants, whenever he wants, and everyone should obey him as a god. When a rebellion broke out in Babylon, he and his armies decimated the city and melted down a golden idol of one of their deities, Bel. The Babylonians, insulted by this, would rebel again, this time with the combined forces of Egypt. Xerxes was a cruel ruler, believing in harsh punishments for disobedience. When Xerxes launched the invasion of Greece, he enslaved many Ionian Greeks into his forces and he created a bridge made out of boats over the Hellespont River. Since a bridge made of boats obviously wouldn't hold for long, it gave way rather quickly to the Hellespont's current. In reaction to the destruction of the bridge, Xerxes gave one of the most baffling punishments to ever be given to a river. According to some records, Xerxes ordered that the Hellespont be whipped 300 times, that shackles be thrown into its depths, and that the river be branded for its impudence. Then, snapping back to reality and deciding to blame an actual consciousness, he personally ordered the overseer of the project beheaded and that the eldest son of the local monarch be cut in half for good fortune. Number 8. Genghis Khan When you think of Genghis Khan or the Mongols, you most likely think of a horseback riding barbarian with a beard and the slaughter of a lot of people. And, well, you wouldn't be completely wrong. Under the leadership of Genghis Khan, and to a lesser extent his children, the Mongols conquered 11 million square miles. At the age of 19, Genghis Khan's wife was kidnapped by a rival tribe, and in response, he went to war, not only conquering but uniting the Mongolian kingdoms. There were a few positives about the Mongol Empire. For example, they revitalized continental trade and were actually more religiously tolerant than most other nations of that time. However, that was only after his conquests, during which Genghis Khan was oftentimes unnecessarily brutal on a large and personal scale, once choosing rather unconventional methods of execution like pouring molten metal into thieves' mouths and ripping prisoners apart with horses. During the Mongol expansion, entire towns would surrender once they knew they were being targeted and those who didn't surrender were slaughtered. If you need any more proof of how ruthless and bloodthirsty Genghis Khan was, an actual quote from the man himself is, The greatest happiness is to vanquish your enemies, to chase them before you, to rob them of their wealth, to see those dear to them bathed in tears, to clasp to your bosom their wives and daughters. There isn't an exact body count of people the Mongols killed, but it's estimated to be in the millions. Fun fact, 
due to his habits of taking part of the raping and pillaging of soon-to-be-conquered towns, there are an estimated 16 million direct descendants of Genghis Khan living throughout the world. Number 7. Ivan the Terrible Ivan the Terrible wasn't actually all that terrible at the beginning of his reign during the 1600s and notably transformed Russia into a modern empire. He was an intelligent leader but suffered from episodes of rage and mental illness that only grew with age until they reached a peak and he murdered his own heir Ivan Ivanovich. Today he's remembered for paranoia and the harsh treatment of Russian nobles. Ivan was quite a mixed bag of emotions. In one case he had architects build him a grand cathedral and was so impressed by their work he blinded them so they couldn't build anything so incredible again. Due to his paranoia, he often suspected people and the common nobility of plotting against him and, as is only logical, had them executed. During a rather large citywide plague, Ivan was concerned the nobility of Novogorod planned to rebel, so he decided the only militaristically sane course of action was to sack the whole city. For these reasons, he's known as one of the cruelest rulers in all of Russian history and for being the beginning of Russia's tradition for harsh autocrats. Number 6. Adolf Hitler We all know this guy fairly well, and seeing how you cannot get by in history class, let alone the everyday life, without hearing about Adolf Hitler and his role in World War II, we'll just assume you know why he's on the list. Just as a recap, in order to bind the German people together, Hitler gave them a common enemy, the Jewish and otherwise minorities living amongst them. Since fear and hate unfortunately work as the brick and mortar of holding people together, it worked and Hitler soon rose to power. But Hitler took it even further than imprisoning and exiling unclean people, and millions were slaughtered with terrifying accuracy and efficiency. His plan to provide Lebensraum or living space for the German people involved occupying much of Eastern Europe, invading Poland, other Slavic states, and parts of Russia with the goal of resettling them with Germans. The previous occupants would be subject to the Hunger Plan, which rationed foods so sparsely that millions starved to death. If you've ever seen videos of Hitler's speeches, you can see that he knows how to rally a crowd, and his atrocities combined with his terrifying charisma coupled to make him one of the most memorable and talked about villainous leaders of all time. The only reason he's not higher on the list is that although he ordered all of these atrocities against humanity, he himself did not carry them out. Furthermore, a majority of his people loved their leader and were kept in the dark on most of his plans. Despite Hitler's actions, his charisma balanced out his evil and he was not feared nearly as much as he should have been. Number 5. Stalin As a result of Stalin's operations, more Russians starved to death within Russia than Hitler slaughtered in Germany or Poland. These were Stalin's own people starving, and the leading cause was Stalin's five-year plan. It was a plan to industrialize Russia from the backwards nation it had been for hundreds of years. The plan was met with limited success and numerous failures. The quotas he had set were too high, and millions of Russians died in one of the worst famines in history. The nation even subjected their own people to slave labor as nearly every Russian prisoner was moved to labor camps. Along with this, even minor crimes or moderate suspicion of a crime would get you carted off with little to no chance of a hearing. Many nations would boycott Russian goods for these reasons and the plan was canceled in the fourth year. Stalin believed in controlling his people with fear and his propaganda campaigns reflected this, making the entire nation fear him and his regime. Stalin inserted himself in every part of Russian society, from renaming cities to his likeness, to making his name part of the national anthem. He wasn't the best father either and lost his captured son during World War II after refusing to exchange him for a German spy. Number 4. Maximilien de Robespierre In the middle of the French Revolution, a revolution meant to create rights for the people and give them a greater voice in the way that they were governed, the completely autocratic Maximilien Robespierre rose to power. The French Revolution at the time of Robespierre was an absolute mess. Their king had been executed, they were at war with Austria, Prussia and Britain, and to top it off, there was a famine which caused the cost of bread to skyrocket. In order to quell the riots and mobs, the Committee of Public Safety was created and led by left-wing extremist Robespierre, 
which was ironic because the committee would ultimately end up doing the public more harm than good. All civil rights were suspended, and although Robespierre did manage to initially bring some kind of stability to France, it didn't last. Soon enough, he was ordering people to the guillotine left and right on suspicion of being against the revolution. He dreamt of a state controlled by the majority and a state where all others would be forced to be free via guillotine. He was slightly insane, and before long, he too was executed through his preferred method, the guillotine. This period in French revolutionary history is also known as the Reign of Terror. Number 3. Attila the Hun Leader of the Hunnic Empire, Attila the Hun spent his days not looking after his volatile, barbaric East European Empire, but instead terrorizing the Romans, Byzantines, Gauls, and anyone else he ran into. He and his armies participated in the slaughter of many towns and cities, taking it so far as to completely wipe some of them off the map, a major factor in the ultimate collapse of the Roman Empire. One of his invasions, the city of Nasus, was attacked so ruthlessly that the corpses of its massacred citizens clogged up the Danube River for years. It wasn't just Attila's army that was so ruthless, the man himself was far from a saint. Among his many atrocities, Attila used his reputation to extort gold from terrified victims, impaled deserters through the rectum and let them bleed to death over multiple days, and even blackmailed the Pope to pay his forces to leave during the invasion of Italy, even though his forces were already in disrepair and were planning on leaving anyway. Despite all this, according to some sources, he was actually a fairly nice guy and a pleasant dinner guest when the mood was right. Still, doesn't make up for it, but it's nice to know he wasn't all bad. Number 2. Emperor Nero Roman emperors were rarely chosen for their ability to govern, so of course a few emperors came into power that were not qualified, not very good leaders, or just absolutely insane. A good mix of all three traits was Emperor Nero and was considered so awful he was labeled as one of the first antichrists. One of the first things he did that signaled he might just be slightly off was killing both his mother and his wife, but that actually wasn't too uncommon for Roman emperors. However, in the year 64, a great fire broke out in Rome, decimating the city, and it was believed by many that Nero had ordered the starting of the fire so there would be an excuse to rebuild. Regardless of the rumors of his involvement, Emperor Nero decided to blame the new Christian denomination for starting the fire. They were executed in a variety of ways such as being used as human candles, being thrown to the lions, and Emperor Nero's favorite, being crucified. Nero was even responsible for the execution of Paul and Peter, very important members of the early Catholic Church. His persecutions against Christians lasted 42 months or 1260 days. When the New Testament was written, the last book called Revelations or the End Times was also said to last 42 months. Along with murdering his own people and setting towns on fire, Nero also enjoyed dressing in beast skins and invited people to orgies under the candlelight of burning Christians. In order to deal with the aristocrats of Rome, whom due to his paranoia he feared were plotting against him, he forced them to commit joint suicide. Ignoring the needs of the empire, he managed to both bankrupt his nation and overtax his people at the same time. Number 1. Vlad the Impaler Vlad the Impaler, or Vlad III, ruled Wallachia in Romania during the age of the Ottoman conquest of the Balkans and was actually the inspiration of Dracula. He fought against the Ottomans with a degree of cruelty that has become slightly disproportional to the truth. He was very fond of impaling humans as a warning against defiance and at one point impaled over 20,000 men, women and children outside of his capital to scare off an invading army. In Western Europe, he was known to have flattened fortresses and villages and took pleasure in the torture of anyone he could. Fear was his weapon of choice and his mastery of fear led to many stories and legends, some of which never even happened. In Germany, a common recap of Vlad's war crimes were that he roasted children alive and fed the corpses to their mothers, and would cut off the breasts of women, force their husbands to eat it, and then impale the husbands. Since many of Vlad's actions were so exaggerated in Germany, it's not easy to tell fact from fiction, and not much else is known about how horrible of a war leader he was. 
Everyone outside of his lands feared him as the blood-sucking demon he would soon inspire, but their fear may have simply been the fault of misinformation. 